Hello, welcome to video number six in my scripting series. Today we're going to be looking at functions, what they are, how you can use them and why you should use them. So let's get started. Um, in my previous video we went over instancing and variables so if you don't understand what this means go ahead and check them out. I'll put a link in the top right corner over here and also in the description. So, um, what I've done here is I have created a block of code, um, which, well, in the script, the code will create a part, give it a name, set its properties, its brick color, anchored position, whatever, and it will put it in the workspace. Now, if we run this script, you can see our part has been created uh, exactly how we wanted it. So this is my part and I've only generated one part so far, but if I wanted to generate five parts, let's say, then I would just copy and paste this code five times. And there we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I should now have five parts generated. Okay, they've been generated. They're all in the same place though. So if we just drag them out, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got these five parts. And if we head back to our script, we now have 50 lines of code um, in our scripts just to generate five parts, which seems quite a lot. And if you just wanted to do the same thing over and over again, this just seems really unnecessary having to write out 50 lines of code to uh, insert five parts and maybe you'd want more parts in your game perhaps you perhaps you would like um, 500 parts right you're not going to want to copy and paste this out 500 times uh, look we're already at uh, 200 lines this is just not uh, efficient and it's going to take up way too much space in our script and it's just going to look horrible for anybody who wants to look at it so if we wanted to insert uh, a part uh, multiple times or we wanted to do an action a number of times we could save ourselves having to copy and paste the same code over and over again by making it a function and a function is a defined set of code which will um, run when we call it by a name so uh, if I wanted to create a function to generate a part then I would only need to write out all of this code once and then I could call the function by its name say 50 times and it would reduce the number of lines of code that I'd have to write significantly so let's create a function I'm going to show you how to create one so firstly you have to tell the script that you want to create a function we do this by saying function and it should appear in blue if you've got the default script editor colors which you probably have once you've told it you want to have a function we're going to have a space and then we're going to write the name of this function so you can name it whatever you like um, and this is what we're going to well the name that you give to this function is what you will write when you want to call it later on so I'm going to name this function generate part for obvious reasons that's just calling the function um, by what it's going to do and then I'm going to have a pair of brackets or parentheses or whatever you call them in uh, in your language and these brackets I will explain them in a future video but they're very important for using functions we're not going to be talking about them today but you need those brackets on the end and that's just syntax that's just how uh, we write functions then drop a line and you should have an end added in by Roblox. You need to make sure you have this end added here because it tells the script where this function ends. So now that we've created our function, any code that we want to execute when we call the function, any code that wants to run when we call it, needs to go in between these two lines. So it needs to go in this space here. So we're going to take our code to generate a part. We're just going to cut it out. And we're going to put it, we're going to paste it inside of here. Now, when you are using a function, when you have got code inside of a function, you have to make sure it's organized and it looks good. So we're going to indent it. We're going to move it along to the side. So to do that, we highlight it and we press tab on the keyboard. And that will just make sure it's uh, it's organized, it looks pretty, and so that, you know, that, that's just the way that, that we do it and, and how the scripters want it to, to look like. So that's just good practice. So now that we've got our function, we've generated it, we've given it a name, generate part. 
and we've put the code that we want to run when we call it inside here. So now, surely if we run this script, it should generate our part as usual because it's just executing this function. Well, no, if you'd listened earlier and when I said about having to call it, uh, you realize that the script will not do anything and it will not run any code inside of a function until you call it by its name. So even though we've defined this function, it's not going to do anything. We've just told the script what we want to do when we call this function by its name, when we trigger it. We haven't triggered this function yet. We haven't triggered it by saying its name. So if you wanted to run this function, you'd have to call it by its name. So we just say generate part. And we then need to put these brackets on the end to let the script know it's a function that we're going to call. So when we write the name of our function and the two brackets, the script is going to look up this function, which we've um, already defined earlier in the script. It's going to find it and then it's going to execute any code inside of the function. So unless you call the function down here, the script is just going to ignore this. So now that we have uh, called it by its name and we run the game, it should insert our part for us. So there we go. It's inserted one part because we've got to this point in the script, realize that we want to call this function and it has executed the code in here to create the part. Now, if I wanted to insert five parts again, all I would need to do is copy this line which calls the function and paste it five times and already you can see that this has saved us having to write out the whole instance.new and all of these properties that we want to edit we can just call this function five times run the script and there we go one two three four five parts generated in just 18 lines not even that if you count the white space so you can see how functions allow you to save time if you are repeating the same code over and over again and not only do they save you time but they also make your code look much neater this code is way 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 neater than the original uh, that when we had like 50 lines or whatever and we don't even need to scroll down we can just see everything in one go and this is just good good clean code that we've written. So we've used a function and we've called it to repeat the same code that we that we wanted to execute. All we need to do, we need to write out once and then we can call it as many times as we like. Very, very good. So that is what a function does. It executes code, which we have defined already uh, down here when we call it. Now, uh, a few things. You have to define a function uh, before you execute it. So this whole function generate part end stuff and any of the code inside here, that is that this 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 part is defining the function, telling the script what to do when we call it. Because if we call this function, and remember that the script goes line by line, it doesn't start down it doesn't start down here, it starts up here. So it goes on line one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, until it gets down here. So it goes step by step from the top. So if we called our, called our function at the top and then defined it later on, you can't do this because if the script is running from the top and it sees generate part, well, we haven't got to line eight yet and the script doesn't know that this that we are going to be calling a function because we haven't defined it at this point it's only until line 8 that this function is defined so if we run the game we're gonna get an error and it says attempt to call global which is the function um, but it doesn't know it's a function that's why it doesn't say function because it hasn't been defined yet so it just it just thinks it's a global attempt to call this thing called generate part and then it's saying it's a nil value when it's a nil value it means that it, it, it it's nothing it hasn't been defined as anything yet so generate part is currently equal to nothing it has no meaning until you get to line 8 until you define the function until when when you define it after the function, sorry, when you um, call it after the function's been defined, you can see no error and it runs perfectly. 
five times. So that is what a func function is. A function allows you to um, put code that you're going to be executing multiple times in there so you don't have to keep writing it out. It will save you time, it will make your script look nicer and this is only the beginning. Functions are really powerful and in the next videos we'll be looking at how to pass information when you call your function you can pass information to it so that your parts can be dynamic and they don't have to all be the same maybe uh, on line 14 you want to generate a blue part right which has a transparency of 0.5 and maybe down here you then want to have a red part which is much bigger in the next few videos we'll be looking at how to pass information to these functions which will make them um, much more uh, advanced and it will actually it will give you um, more meaning as to why we use functions because right now you might be thinking oh well I don't really get the point of this we can just copy and paste the code out it's, it's not that big of, a, of an issue um, and yes you could say that but in the next few videos you'll also see why functions are so powerful and why you will be wanting to use them so thanks for watching as I said check out my other videos in this playlist I've got lots of them so far this is the sixth one so you've got five other ones to watch if you've just stumbled upon this one right now um, and there are going to be more coming soon so by the time you're watching this video there might be another one out so Click on the uh, thumbnail on the right side of your screen to go straight there. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click on the Alvin Blocks logo in the middle of your screen right now or by clicking the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like, share it with somebody, maybe like a friend or someone else who you, you know uh, on Roblox so that they can also learn about functions. It's good to spread the knowledge. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.